Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you and Robert Kennedy Jr. on the line with us. He is an attorney, a veteran environmental activist, writer and author of several books, including Crimes Against Nature, and now has a new movie out. TheLastMountainMovie.com is the website for it. And uh, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom. It's great to have you with us. Uh, tell us, yeah, the, the movie doesn't open here in D.C. for another week, so I'm going to have to wait to see it. But I have seen the the website and the, the the rushes, and it looks this looks like a really substantial movie. What brought you to make this movie? Well, I've been involved in mountaintop removal mining, fighting mountaintop removal mining for um, almost since the beginning of my career as an environmental attorney for 27 years. The reason, Tom, is all the reasons you talk about it. it. It's a it's a template for what's happening in the rest of America, and it is a it's a model, it's a paradigm of what happens when corporations take over government and the communities, the people, the landscapes, um, everything becomes commoditized. In West Virginia, over the past ten years, a handful of companies, about four, but mainly Massey Energy, have blown up, detonated uh, every week, 2,500 tons of dynamite a day of ammonia nitrate explosives a day. It's the equivalent of a Hiroshima bomb once a week. They have flattened an area of the Appalachians that are the size of Delaware. They've blown up the 500 biggest mountains in West Virginia. They have buried 2,500 miles of rivers and streams. Now, if you buried a 100 feet the Hudson River tributary, we would put you in jail. If you blew up a single mountain in the Berkshires or the Catskills or the White Mountains or the Green Mountains up where you are, we'd put you in jail. You couldn't do this in California or Utah or Colorado. But they, these companies get away with it by subverting democracy and by hiding what they're doing from the public and the press. And if you go to West Virginia, Every level of democracy has been subverted. If you're an individual landowner, you have no right to stop people from raining boulders and toxic dust onto your property, from poisoning your wells, from poisoning your children. You, uh, you have no right to participate in local zoning ordinances that would zone out mountaintop removal or planning boards or, or, um, or building inspections. The agency that is supposed to protect the West Virginia public from environmental injury, the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, is a, has a, is a captured agency. It's a sock puppet for the industry that it's supposed to regulate. And the entire, virtually the entire judiciary of West Virginia and every relevant politician, this is what this movie shows, mm-hmm. That every relevant politician in the state, Republican and Democrat, has been corrupted by this industry. Two thirds of the people in West Virginia, by every poll, want to see mountaintop removal mining ended immediately. Yet, not a single politician in the state will say that publicly. Amazing. Now, was was it a clip from your movie that I saw, or was it just something in passing where where Jay Rockefeller, the one of the senators from West Virginia? was asked about mountaintop removal, and he, and he said basically, please, let's just not talk about that topic. Let's not go there. <laughs> well, he, you know, he's one of the Democrats who right. fought along. And, it, and he's a good actually, guy on most issues. His first election, you know, 20 years ago, he ran against mountaintop removal, and he was beaten by the coal industry. And then the next election, he said he was a friend of coal, and that's where he's been ever since. And it's an embarrassment for him. Because he's a man otherwise who prides himself on integrity. Right. But he's got to take a dive on this. Let me tell you something, Tom, that, that is of interest to your viewers or to your listening audience. Both, actually. There's a march right in now. West Virginia. Yes. What? Both right now. We're, we're on both radio and television right now, okay. live. There's a march in West Virginia that I'm participating in, and it's on March 6th. You know, there, there, there's a civil disobedience going on in West Virginia now that's bigger than the Selma March. There's already 2,500 people who've been arrested, and nobody's heard of it because the press down there has been so subverted that nothing gets out of West Virginia. Hmm. It's really extraordinary. But there's a march on Blair Mountain, and you may uh, – it begins June 6th, and then the the the, the, um, the action itself is on June 10th. And 11th, my movie will be screened in Charleston, June 10th, and everybody's going to camp out at the bottom of the 
mountain, including about 15 Kennedy kids, and then and it's sponsored by the United Mine Workers and by the by Sierra Club, by NRDC. But this history will interest you. In 1921, as now, West Virginia was essentially a company town. Right. The shops, the homes were owned by, and the mines, of course, were owned by the mining industry, and the local sheriffs played an important enforcement role for that industry. If a miner got injured, their family had to be evicted from the home, so a new one could be brought in. The, the sheriffs were given that job, and, and if union troublemakers came into the mines, they had to be locked up, beaten, killed, or escorted out of the county, and the sheriffs were employed by the mining industry to do that. There was one sheriff who resisted. His name was Sid Hatfield. He was a member of the famous Hatfield-McCoy family. Hmm. And he refused to be purchased by the mining industry. And in fact, he would put mine operators in jail for mistreating their workers. Whoa. He was invited to a parlay by the industry and by two um, captive sheriffs in the adjacent county. He knew he was going to be murdered. He was bet he was begged by the um, by the mine workers not to go, but he went anyway. He had that hard headedness that is very characteristic of West Virginians. He went anyway, and on the courthouse steps, he was stripped of his weapons and then executed by the mine industry in broad day- daylight. Wow. This triggered one of the biggest labor riots in American history. Ten thousand miners marched on Blair Mountain to confront the industry. They were met there with pillboxes that were uh, staffed by Pinkertons with Gatling guns who gunned them down with machine guns. And Warren Harding, who was then president of the United States, was also in the pocket of the mining industry. He ordered the United States Air Force to drop bombs on them and, in fact, to drop poison gas on them. Wow. That's a violation of posse comitatus. This was the only time in American history that the United States Air Force has deliberately bombed American citizens. And it, although the Union finally backed down, although the miners finally backed down, it was the beginning of the organization of the United Mine Workers, and it was the milestone, the, the kind of the Bethlehem of the Union movement in this country. Right. And um, Massey Cole... So this is like Blair Mountain is the Gettysburg of the American middle class, of democracy, of all the things we value and all the things that you see under attack today in Michigan and Iowa and all of the states that you've been talking about over the past several months. Massey Cole, a few months ago, announced partially out of spite for the unions and partially just for the profits that it was going to blow up. Blair Mountain. It's one of the last standing mountains in West Virginia, and this is, as I said, it's the it's the, and it's an icon. It's the icon. It's the Gettysburg of the Union movement. So, in, for the first time, the United Mine Workers are getting together with the environmental community and staging a massive march and civil disobedience um, that begins June sixth. You can find out more about it, and I hope you'll join us. Um, by going to the the our movie website, which is the, the last, last movie website. or the last mountain movie dot com, right? Correct. Yeah, uh, www.thelastmountainmovie.com. dot dot com, and and the movie, of course, is called The Last Mountain. And is it about Blair Mountain? Is that the? No, it's about Coal River Mountain, which Coal. is one of the last standing mountains. Blair and Coal River, one of the last standing mountains in southern West Virginia, and it's about a group of people up in the hollows who have decided not to let Massey destroy Blair Mountain. So, I, wonder, River Mountain. I, 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 can, I can hardly wait until it gets here to Washington, D.C., where I'm living now. Robert Kennedy, Jr., TheLastMountainMovie.com. Keep up the great work, sir. Thank you, Tom. Honored to have you with us.